Hello and happy Fridays. Welcome to the channel, Fridays with Brandon. Uh, today we are going to be in episode, well, in Fluke Fridays, episode number 61. What we're going to be going over today is uh, a couple process tools from Fluke, some multifunction documenting process calibrator, the 754, and the 729 automatic pressure calibrator. What we're going to do is we're going to use the 754 to simulate or to mimic a heart transmitter or a transmitter I shouldn't say a heart transmitter a transmitter in the field um, the cool thing about this is if you were in a pinch and you already have a 754 and you had a transmitter go down and you didn't have a spare on the shelf you could actually use this as your transmitter to get your process working so I think that's kind of cool and then you also see the features of the 729 and the automatic pumping but it was kind of a cool feature one of our um, Sam's, our sales application managers at Fluke, kind of did a video internally for us and I thought this was kind of a cool video to highlight a feature of the 754 that you might not be aware of. So anyways, let's turn to the tools. We've got our 729 on this side, I'm going to turn it on, and then we've got our 754 on this side. This is our uh, documenting process calibrator, multifunction, so you can do both uh, temperature, both uh, t you can do temperature and pressure. With temperature you can do RTDs or thermal couples. And then with pressure you have to have a pressure module which we happen to have one right here. And the one that we have today goes up to 300 PSI. So what we're going to do like I said is this, the 729 is actually going to do the calibration and this is going to mimic a transmitter. So it's going to mimic a pressure transmitter because we have both the module and it's so we're going to give it pressure. We're going to put in pressure from the 729 to the 754 and the 754 is going to push out milliamps and then uh, and then we'll be able to actually confirm everything on the 729 that it's measuring and putting out the way we want. Okay, so first thing we're going to do to set this up, we're going to say we are in... We're in measure mode. It's doing voltage right now. We're going to push this little button right here. Doink. And that's going to look for pressure. Okay. It's got a smart device so it can figure out what kind of module it has plugged into it. It goes up to 300 PSI. And then we're going to do source. And we want to turn that on because we want to output milliamps and we want to simulate a transmitter. Okay. Good, good, good. Now we're going to hit this again. Oh, enter value. Let's do four. Just four. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. And now we're going to hit measure source again. And now we're measuring pressure out. And we are seeing, and we're automatically sourcing the pressure right now, or automatically sourcing the millions right now. Now, what we're going to do is hit more F4 for more choices. Hit that again. And now you see over here, you see transmitter mode. We're going to hit F1, go into transmitter mode. Now we're going to say what our range is going to be. So for this one, just for fun, I'm going to, because it's a 0 to 300 PSI, I don't have to use the full 300 PSI of the module. I'm only going to go up to 100. So I'm going to say 0 PSI to 100, enter, and then down. And if we want to give it some air just for fun, we'll say the bottom level of that at zero is going to be 4.1, and then the top is going to be 20.1. And we know if it was in good working order, it would be 4 to 20, not 4.1 to 20.1. Okay, so we say done, and now you can see before I was just transmitting four milliamps, but now it's all based on the pressure from zero to 100 PSI, okay? And because I've got this fancy little quick disconnect, it's holding a little bit of pressure on there right now. But we're gonna get rid of that here in a second. Okay, now we have to make our connections between the 754 and the 729. The way we're gonna do that, I've done another video on this, but this is our quick disconnect, finger disconnect, you just put this little 
this piece on whatever you want to connect and you can screw this in finger tighten and we'll have a good seal you can see when I did that but in the background if you're running the video this changed the pressure when I the hose punched through that that uh, valve okay the so first thing we're going to do is we're going to vent off okay so we're open venting and we're seeing uh, we're really close okay we can zero that pressure um, and that one's so close I'm not going to worry about it okay so now we're going to go into measure pressure right and uh, or I should say we're going to source pressure. Yeah, we're going to source pressure and measure current. Oh, one other thing I do need to do is I need to connect with test leads. Whoa, what are we doing? Sorry, it was doing something I didn't necessarily want. Okay, so black to black, red to red. Okay, let's go back. We're gonna do, oh, actually, loop power on. Yep, we can turn that on. Okay, but it's not gonna have a heart device. That's okay. So what we're gonna do is go back we do have our loop power on though. And we want to do a calibration. Now you're testing me. Let's see. Here we go. So under task, I'm going to say pressure transmitter or P to I because this is going to simulate taking a pressure and putting it out as current. So P to I over here. We hit enter, and it is all messed up on my uh, units. So it says KPA, so I'm gonna click this. Just hit enter, and now you get all the uh, units you can choose from. I want PSI, enter. Now I got PSI up here, milliamps down here. That's what we want. But you can see this says from zero to 300. Remember I set the other one up to go from zero to 100, so we gotta have that. And I'm gonna say four to 20, okay and then continue and we're tolerance we could do maybe 0.5 and instead of going three up three down for demo purposes I like doing instead of a five point test I just like doing three down so I end with no pressure and it doesn't take as long for you watching we'll do seven seconds delay um, or settling time and linear okay continue now at this point I can see this, you can say it's, see it says measure current, and this says source. So this is sourcing uh, 4.105, and we're measuring 4.106. So, you know, uh, what is that? Tens, hundred, thousandths of a million? That's pretty stinking close. That's good. So we're going to say auto test, and watch this thing pump. Now you see the first set point is 100 PSI and it's going to pump all the way up to that and we can see over here we are measuring PSI and remember we're measuring it through this module yeah. measuring it through this module and it's going to get here and the cool thing about the 729 is this automatically pumps up it has an internal pump not only does it pump up and get close it's now going to do a fine tune adjust with me doing nothing all based on this set point so you can see we're getting really close and it's not going to start going into that stable time until it gets right on the money basically so now it's going to go to seven seconds then once it does that then it's going to drop down to 50 psi it's going to drop and you can see you know it's hard to look at both screens at the same time, but you can look that this is what's actually sourcing the PSI. This is measuring the PSI on my left hand, and this is sourcing the milliamps, and this is measuring the milliamps. So you kind of got a, a check. 
And again, the whole point of this demo is one, to show you the 729 and its capabilities of automatic pressure, but two, to show you this thing, if you had a pressure, a pressure uh, transmitter go down, whether it be a heart transmitter or a dumb transmitter, you could actually put this in line and have it help run your process until you could get a part order. And with long lead times the way they are, this could this could help you really get over it in a pinch. Um, the other thing is you could obviously it only has a battery, so it's only going to last so long. So you would you would need to plug it into an outlet. But then if, once it was plugged into an outlet, it could run for a long time for you. So pretty cool little um, setup we got here. And you can see once we get through all of this pressure you can see it if you failed anywhere and you can see we did fail and we were outside of um, the tolerance of 0.5 that we set so we could say done you could put in the tag number if you wanted say done now we could do an as left test right um, but I'm gonna go over here and do change setup and I'm gonna change this to four whoops four to 20 so that we don't have that built-in air and then I can do an as left test do an auto test again I'm gonna speed through this process I'm gonna fast forward it for you guys but I'll you'll be able to see that I'll have a passing test when it's all said and done Okay, so you can see we've gone through the as left test now and we passed because we were under our 0.5 percentage error. You can see at this table what our test point was for each of these, so 100, 50, and zero, what we actually sourced and what we measured from milliamps. And again, this is all based on making the 754 act as though it was a transmitter. So again, you can save the tag and move forward. I hope this was helpful. Uh, this is kind of a cool secret feature that a lot of people don't know with the 754 and I wanted to bring everyone's attention to it. The other thing is I'm about to jump into a Q&A session. Uh, it's, I only have one question. It's kind of cool. It's a question on the earth ground clamp meter and Flute Connect and how can you tie an asset to it. So I'm going to show you some screenshots on my computer um, of my iPhone so that you can see exactly what you would click and how you would do that and that'll help you. So I hope that's helpful. You guys well, actually, this isn't the end of the video, so stay for three seconds and I'll be back with you. <clears throat> okay, so we're back up at the office. And like I said, somebody asked about in Flute Connect with the 1630-2 Earth Ground Tester. How do you assign it to assets? How do you work with that? And there's a couple different ways of doing that. And this, this video does not just apply for the Earth Ground Clamp. You could really do this for any... Uh, any measurement that's in Fluke Connect, whether it be thermal imaging, 805 vibration, um, bolts or amps from any of the multimeters or clamp meters that are connected to Fluke Connect. So this is a screenshot of my iPhone and you can see I'm just at the main screen once you log in. From here what I'm going to do is click this little three bar thing and go to the next screen, which will look like this. In here you can see I've got a few things locked, the assets and the work orders. You can pay for this and or Fluke might be giving this away, I don't know if you just ask for a free trial, um, but you could do assets. So that is, there's a paid for way that you can actually create your own assets and assign it to assets. That is one way of doing it and that's pretty easy once you pay for it. I'm going to show you if you don't pay for it how you potentially could do this for your documenting purposes. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click measurements because I've already gotten the measurement off my 1630-2 and here is the measurement. This is a measurement from the 378 but this is a 1630-2 FC measurement and so I would just touch this with my finger and click it and we go to this screen. It would open up just this measurement in the full-blown screen. At this point, you have a couple options. You could do a voice note. I did not do a voice note. I just tapped inside of this notes box and then I typed my note. So I could say, and I think in this case, I said machine 14. Um, let's see. 
Yes. And then I hit enter and then boom, it popped up here in the notes. Now, once I have this, if I'm not going to use the assets within Flute Connect as my documenting source, if I need to document it with a PDF in some other kind of system that my company has or whatever, I can click this button right here, this little share button, the square with an arrow on it, and it's going to bring this. And then you can choose what kind of format you want to send an email. So I said click um, PDF and it's going to pop up in this and then you can actually mail it. Now I will say one thing you do, at least with the iPhone, you have to have, you can't just use Outlook as your um, app on your phone. You also have to have the, the mail app, the default mail app that comes from Apple. You have to make sure that whatever account you want to email from is in your mail app inside of the uh, iPhone. It's not difficult. You can, like for me, I use my Outlook app mostly, but I still have the mail app running in the background so that my Flute Connect will be able to send emails to it. And I just put in my email up there. You then hit send and it will go off to you. And you can see right here it says machine 14, which gives you your asset. So that's how you could use Flute Connect to tag an asset and uh, just then once you have it in your email, you can then put it that PDF in whatever, either file format or in any file folders kind of thing you want to do. Or if you've got a asset management software, you can put it, upload that file into that. So anyways, I hope this is helpful. I hope you guys had a wonderful week and please leave your comments below. That's what gives me ideas for new videos as well as questions. I love hearing your questions. It helps me think outside of the box and questions I don't think about every day in the fluke world. And if you haven't hit subscribe, hit subscribe and have a wonderful weekend. You guys take care.